is what's going on, okay? Uh, right guys, so it's four o'clock, it's Thursday, it's mini tennis at home. Uh, my name's Steve Cockle, uh, I'm the director of tennis for Live Love Sport and for the Wimbledon Park Tennis Academy. Um, if you're watching this and you've watched it in a series, this is lesson number four, and we've been doing lessons every day, um, every Thursday at four o'clock through the course of lockdown. And we're trying to encourage young players aged between three and eight or nine years old to practice their tennis at home and do some really cool and interesting skills so that they're not um, stopping their tennis practice during the course of while the courts are shut down. So today's class is going to be about serving. It's lesson number four, it's all about serving. We're in a small space, so we're not going to be able to crash loads of tennis balls around and practice our serve. So we have to practice the individual skills that are going to make us good at serving. But like all our classes, uh, we have to start with a warm up before we get into some of our, sh our swing shapes. And then we're going to go into some of the specific practices the class goes on. Uh, anyway, so I hope you have a really nice time in the class. Uh, you do need a tennis racket and you also need some kind of tennis ball. So if you want to go and get those um, and you can come back and join the class while we're doing our warm up. And obviously, because it's an exercise class, we always get some water. There'll be a couple of short breaks during the course of the class. OK, um, first thing we're going to do, uh, Freddie's here as well. So Freddie, come in, say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone. So this is my son, Freddie. He's 12, so he's not as young as some of you guys who might be watching it. Or if your kids are this age and your parents and you're watching it, you can do it at this age. So Freddie has some fun doing these sort of exercises. Um, but he's helping me out today because some of the things we're going to do are definitely better if you do them as a pair. So you can either be with your mum or your dad. Or if your mum and dad and you're watching this, then obviously you can learn them and do them with your kids at home. OK, uh, so what we're going to do today is we just found a couple of markers. So these are magazines that were lying around in the lounge. Um, you just need two things that you're going to put down. I'm going to put one down on the side next to Freddie and one down the side next to me. And all we're going to do with our warm up is we're just going to start moving our feet behind our markers. So Freddie and I are going to warm up together. And again, just if we're doing this as a series, you'll know in this class we try and keep our balance by moving on our toes. Try, guys, not to let your heels touch the floor. Try to feel like you're moving from your right to your left. And then that helps us practice not just our movement and get warmed up, but it also helps with our balance. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do right foot to the touch and then left foot touch. So we're going to keep our feet moving in between. And then we're going to do right foot, back feet moving and then left foot. Okay, ready? So we'll do it together. You ready? So right, back, left, back, right, back, left. Good. And we keep that rhythm. Right and left. Right and left. Right and left. Good. And right and left. Good. Last couple. Right and left. And right and left. And stop. Brilliant. So we've used magazines. You guys, you could put a towel in front of you, or you could just put something that you could see. So I'm looking around my lounge, I could see slippers and other bits and pieces. You can even put something like a mat or something like that in front of you, whatever you've got, just some sort of marker so that you can touch it without breaking it. And also it's just a reference point so our feet do different things. Now this time we're just gonna go from our toes and we're gonna start going right, left, right, left, right, left. And we're gonna really move our feet quite fast for 30 seconds. So I'm touching, coming back, touching, coming back. And I'm going to try and keep quite high energy in that. So 30 seconds, we're ready. Let's do it. Right leg first, ready? What did we go? Right, left, right, left, right, left. We just keep that rhythm, just touching our object in front. Not too hard. Just nice and light. Keep that balance. That's halfway. Keep your rhythm, Fred. Keep your arms nice and loose. And then 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Whew. All right? Yeah. So heart rate's just gone up a little bit. So we just used the magazine in front of us. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. And all we were doing was tapping with our right leg and tapping with our left leg. Okay, now we're gonna just do one more for our warm up. In our previous classes, we've learned to jump and land in a position called a split step. So if you guys play lots of tennis, you'll know what that is. If you've watched our classes before, you'll have seen me demonstrate it. If I do it sideways on, we try to land and we get our back nice and straight, our knees a little bit bent and we're nice and ready. And that's a good position for us to receive the tennis ball when it comes towards us. We can do a great job of moving our feet from there and hitting the ball. So we're gonna go split and then we're gonna go right, left and split again. So 
We're going to see if we can do a nice easy exercise. Split, right, left, split again. And again, ready, split, right, left, split again. Okay, great. So we're going to do that for 30 seconds. Try to keep up with me and Freddie. See if you can split step at the same time that we do. And then touch, touch, and back to your split step again. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. 30 seconds should be enough for this one. Three, two, one. Split, right, left, split again. That's one. Split again. Good. Ready, Freddie? Split, right, left, split again. Good. Ready? Toes moving. Split, right, left, split again. Good. Toes moving. Split. Good. Right, left, split again. Good. Toes moving. Right, left, split again. Fantastic. Toes moving. Split step again. Right, left, and into that last position. Last one. Ready? Split. Right, left, and split again. Fantastic. Okay. Well done. So we're working on our split step, making sure we know that that's a position to get into uh, to help us keep our balance and also to be able to move around. And then coordination with our feet, tapping that magazine that we've got in front or whatever object you've got, helps us to think about where our feet are going to be placed. Now we're going to try and have a little game with Freddie so you guys can do this at home as well. So Fred, bring your magazine just in front. Again, like I said guys, if you haven't got a magazine, Put a towel down from the kitchen or something that you can tap without breaking it. Okay, and this time you're going to hear me call out and Freddie has the tap with the foot that I call. So he's going to be moving his feet fast, split, and then he's going to hear me say right and he's got to tap it and come back. Okay, so he moves his feet fast, split, left, he has to tap it and come back. So he's got to try to react to my call and we're going to try and do it five times. You ready Freddie? So feet moving and right. Good, come back, feet moving, right. Good, come back, feet moving and left. Good, feet moving and left. Feet moving and right. And breathe. Okay, great. Did you see how we did that, guys? So we were moving our feet, we split, and then we have to touch it with the foot that the coach calls out. So you're listening for the, the, um, the side of your body. If I say right, you tap the magazine or your towel, whatever you've got in front, you tap with your right foot. And if I say left, you tap with your left. Now, if I say right, left, you have to do the two together. So if I go right, left, it's right, then left, and then back and you're ready for the next position. Okay, here we go, friend. Listen for my calls, guys. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Left, right. Good, back, excellent. Right, left. Good, back. Right. Good, well done. Left. Good, left, right. Good, and back we come. Now we can add in three as well. Off we go, keep going, Freddie. Left, right, left. Good, back in again. Right, right, left. Good, well done, back in. Left, right, left. Fantastic, last one. Left, right, left, right. Oh, four in a row, brilliant, well done Freddie. So from this position, we're trying to get our feet moving, but we're also listening for a command from our coach to help us react to what's going on. Sometimes, the time it takes for us to get our foot in the right position makes us fall over and lose our balance. And it doesn't matter, okay, we can just have some fun with that. So do you feel nice and warm? Yeah. We've got jumpers on, so we're probably going to warm up quite easily. So if you've got your jumper on like us, you can take it off. We're going to keep ours on just because we're going to keep talking to you. Remember in this class, if you're watching it on Facebook Live with us, then great. Thanks for joining in. I'm Steve, Wimbledon Park Tennis Academy and Live Love Sport. This is Freddie. He's helping out the class. And every Thursday at four o'clock, we do some mini tennis at home. So you guys can do some warm ups together and you can practice your skills. And hopefully, even though you can't get on a tennis court, you can keep practicing your tennis. If you're watching it on YouTube, this is part four of our series. So hopefully you'll learn something today about your serve. And then you can watch the other videos, which I highly recommend. And then when you get to this level, le lesson four, you should be starting to pick up on some of the skills that we're showing you. Uh, today's lesson will last for about 30 minutes. And we've already done about five or 10 minutes of those with our warm up. And the next section we're going to do is some ball work. So if you get your tennis ball, and we've got two types of ball that we use. This is the one that we recommend for playing at home. It's called a sponge ball. You can buy that online really cheaply, or you can get one of these big red balls, okay? These, for you guys as mini players, are used in red level tennis. That one's pretty soft, that one's really soft. So if we make a mistake and we throw the ball around, it's not gonna break anything that's precious to us when we're playing in our home. Okay, now the first thing we're gonna do, because it's serving today, is we're gonna just start working on throwing towards an object over our head. So, Behind the camera, you can't see this, I've got my wall there, and if I throw the ball over to the wall, it can come back to me and I can catch it. Now you guys have got to do the same thing, you've got to find a safe place. 
Uh, on the side as well, I've just got a little wall here in my lounge. I can throw the ball and I can catch it, it'll come straight back to me. I'm not gonna throw it against something that I could break, but again, if I'm using my sponge ball, it's not gonna break anything anyway. But be careful where you do this exercise. You can watch us do it, and then you can start practicing it when you've got some space. And if you're not sure if you're a young player and you're watching this, ask your parents and just check with them where is a good place that you can start throwing the ball. Now the first exercise we're trying to do is to take the ball behind my neck. So I always say to everybody, it's like brushing your hair at the back with the tennis ball. If I brush my hair and then I throw it, I should be able to release the ball above my head with my arm in this position, which is the first exercise we start to learn to do as we're young players when we're learning to serve. Before we've even picked a racket up or anything like that, we learn to throw the ball and let go of it above our head, which is what we call overarm, rather than underneath here by our waist, which is what we call underarm. So we're gonna practice our overarm throws. We're gonna try and throw the ball towards the wall or towards a person you're playing with, they'll either catch it or it'll come back and you can catch it and you can go again. So I'm gonna ask Freddie to have a go. He's gonna stand by again. We've got our magazine in front because we know that's the point by which we can start from the same position each time. And he's just gonna count five throws. He's gonna throw them past the camera. It's gonna come back. Every time he catches it, that's one. And he's got to complete five of the actions. Okay, Freddie, off you go. Five throws for me. Over on throw. And then it comes back. Keep your feet moving when you get the ball going back to you. Over on throw and catch not too hard. Count them out for me. Three. Four. Four. Five. And five. And stop there. Okay, he managed to do five, so now I come in and I'll have a go. If you're working with partners, it's really good to make sure you take it in turns and you can either count for each other or you can count your own. Again, if you're watching the video whilst you're doing it, let's look at some exercises or some specifics in the exercise of how we do it to make sure we're doing it right. So what I'm gonna work on is getting my elbow up level with my shoulders, and then I'm gonna to drop to touch my, the back of my head so I feel like I'm brushing my hair, and then I'm gonna throw the ball towards the wall on the other side. So again, elbow up, trying to get it level with my shoulders, brush my hair, and then throw the ball to the other side. Oh, I could catch the, all the way, from that way, do you see that one? Okay, so Freddie's got to do that, so he stands behind his marker. Again, our marker's a magazine, so you guys can have something on the floor a shoe or anything like that, two in the same place. Okay, let's see if we can get our elbow up. So the first job he had to do was to get his elbow level with your uh, shoulder. shoulder, and he had to do what with the ball? What did you have to do with the ball? Throw it against the wall. Yeah, that's the release point, he's got to throw against the wall, but what did you have to do before you let Take go of it? Back. Take it back and brush your hair. he has to brush his hair. I want you guys to brush your hair with the ball before you throw it towards uh, the object that you've picked, so with the wall or to your partner. So off we go again, five, brush your hair and release. That's one, I'll count for you. Elbow level with your shoulder and then release. That's two, good, elbow level with your shoulder, brush your hair. That's three, well done, good throw. Elbow level with your shoulder, that's four. One more, elbow level with your shoulder and that's five, good, swap with me, excellent, well done. Did you find that easy? Yes. So easy exercise to learn to let go of the ball up here. More tricky sometimes with young players to remember the skill that the coaches are. So sometimes we enjoy throwing it and we forget that we're supposed to have done something first. So Freddie did a really good job of remembering to brush his hair before he let go of the ball. Now we're gonna do one more, uh, one more extension of that, one more little exercise that follows on from that for you guys to practice. So again, I've got my ball. I know where I'm throwing it, I know it's a safe place, but instead of standing like this and looking at my elbow being level with my shoulders, I'm now gonna turn and you can see my toes are pointed to the side. Now you can't see my chest. You can see that my shoulders are facing you guys and I'm in a position called sideways on. Now when my elbow comes up, you actually can't see my arm, it's hidden behind you, but you can see it's still like a right angle here. It's level with my shoulders. But because I've changed my body position, I'm now sideways on before I do my throw. And then I'm gonna still brush my hair and then I'm gonna throw the ball towards the target that I've chosen. So one more time, I'm gonna try and hide my chest, bring my elbow up level with my shoulders, brush my hair, and then I'm gonna to throw towards my target. Okay, Freddie, up you come. Let's see if you can remember. There's only one extra bit to do there. What was the extra bit? The extra bit is what? Okay, you've got to pay attention to the coach. So he's beginning, he's standing there watching and he's beginning, he's got to pay attention. So I have my feet pointed to the 
side, side of the yeah. side of the lounge rather than me facing the camera. So I'm trying to hide my chest and then my arms are gonna come up. So come on, let's hide your chest. If you look in the camera, can they see your chest? No. No, good, okay, so we're in a position again. We try to bring our elbow up level with our Shoulder. shoulders. And what we're gonna do before we let go of the ball? Brush our head. Brush our head five times, off you go. Brush your hair, release to the target and recatch the ball. Elbow level. Good, try to stay sideways on. Try not to go too far this way. Just stay sideways on, brush your hair. Good, remember where you're throwing it because we don't want to throw it. To, we don't want to throw it towards something we're not aiming for. That's how sometimes things can get a bit broken. So again, where are we throwing it? There. Yeah, point. So you can point where you want to throw it. That helps you kind of think, hey, where is it going? And if I point, I'm probably going to end up throwing the ball on that line as well. Okay, that's three. That's four. And that's five. Did you point? Yes. Well, a dangly hand, yeah, like a dangly hand like this guy. So you've got to point and get that arm nice and straight. Okay, great. So we started to work on our throwing action and we've got one more. So one step that follows on. The first step we had was trying to keep the elbow level with the shoulders and brushing the hair. Then we hit the chest and we stood sideways on. Now we're going to look at how our body moves as we let our arm go because if I'm sideways on and I try and throw it, I'm going to do a really awkward action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow my body to turn as I let go of the ball. So if I do it in slow motion, can you just pass me the ball for a second? So I, same thing, let's see if we can progress through our steps. So first thing, I want to get my elbow level with my shoulders and I'm going to be brushing my hair. I hide my chest and turn sideways on. Now when I throw, I'm going to try to see if I can show you my chest as I let go of the ball. So if you're watching the camera, you should be able to see the logo, the Wimbledon Park Tennis logo where my chest is before I let go of the ball. So from this position, I'm going to point to my target, brush my hair, there's that logo, and then I'm going to throw the ball. So the logo is the name of the Tennis Academy on my chest. One more time. So I'm going to get my arm up. That I told Freddie to point. That would help. Brush my hair, hide my chest, and then I'm going to try and show you my chest before I throw the ball. So we learn, like we did last lesson, to rotate before we do the action, and that brings us to a position which is really good for learning to swing our racket and hit the ball on a serve. So again, we'll just try five. So this is point three, and you come, Freddie, please. Yeah. So again, we're going to progress. The first position was he wants to make sure his elbow is level with his shoulders, and he's going to make sure he brushes his hair with the ball before he throws it. Now he's sideways on, but before he throws it, he's going to try to learn to turn, and we're going to try and see if we can see that chest before we let go of the ball. And what you'll find with this one is he'll get a bit more natural movement of his body before he throws. Okay, everyone, let's see if we can do it together if you're following, or just take your time and practice at home. And Freddie's going to try five, so five throws towards his target. Remember, point at your target. Three, two, one, off you go, I'll count him out. So that's one good throw. Look for that chest turn. Two good throw. Don't hit the camera. Three. Good, remember to keep your target. Four. And five. Okay, take a step to the side. Now, I'm going to ask Freddie, just come out here for a sec, Freddie. What did you notice was different about the quality, so how good your throws were when you had the extra point of turning your chest. Did they get better, were they the same, or did they get worse? They were better. Okay, can you describe to everybody how they got better? Um, they got better because I was pointing where I wanted the ball to go. Good. And because I was pointing, the ball went there. Great, so by pointing at the target, we were more accurate with the throw, but by turning the chest, we also went to the target more, didn't we? So if we don't churn our chest much, if we throw like this and we keep our chest where it was, the ball can come out of our hands in different directions. If we turn our chest and we can open up this position here, then when I let go of the ball, I'm gonna throw it to my target. So I become more accurate, which is very important when it comes to making sure the racket is gonna to go to the right position to hit the ball. Okay, so uh, let's just take a quick time out. Have a quick drink of water, Freddie. I'm going to have a bit of water as well. You guys have a little bit of water. Remember, if you're a young player, it's so important that we keep drinking to make sure that we stay hydrated, which is a really important word. Hydrated means where we've got our body full of water and we're not going to lose loads of energy when we're playing. So if you're running around a lot and you're playing football or tennis or any of your other favourite sports, then you've got to make sure you take plenty of water. So even if you're having a great time, just take a time out when your coach says, and make sure you have a few sips of water. Okay, now, we're just waiting for Freddie to come back. 
In the meantime, we'll just introduce ourselves one more time. So remember that this is at Live Love Sport if you're watching on YouTube, or it's at Wimbledon Park Tennis if you're watching on Facebook Live. Uh, my name is Steve Cockle, and I am the director of tennis for Live Love Sport and the Wimbledon Park Tennis Academy. And every Thursday at four o'clock, we do mini tennis at home, which is uh, tennis lessons from my lounge that you can copy and watch if you're stuck in lockdown, or if you want to just simply practice when you're at home and you can't get to your tennis court. Uh, today's lesson is lesson number four and we're concentrating on serving and the first part of the lesson we've been working on our throwing action which is the important movement to teach us how to get the racket above our head and hitting the ball like a professional would do on their serve and the next thing we're going to try and do is work on our racket skills so like in every tennis lesson we want to pick the racket up and we want to feel what it's like to swing but this is a really important one if you haven't got enough space above your head or if you haven't got enough room around your body because you're at home, then you need to ask a grown-up if it's okay to swing your racket. And your grown-up will come in and they will say whether you've got enough room or not, and then it's okay to carry on. If you're struggling for room above your head, you can do these exercises on your knees, which is what we're gonna do a little bit later. And that way, when you swing above your head, you can start to see that you're not gonna be near the ceiling or banging into anything. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna start off and I'm going to show you what we're working on. So the first thing we're going to try and do is replicate our action with our racket swings without actually hitting a ball. So if we go through what we tried to do before, we have our elbow level with our shoulders. We try to bring our hand to our back of our head. Remember, we brushed our hair with the ball and then we turn sideways on and then we opened our chest up and we released our racket. Now, when we threw the ball, we let go there with a tennis racket in our hand. We're not going to let go because otherwise the racket will go flying or break something. We're gonna carry the racket swing on and we're gonna to learn to finish down the side of our body. So we're gonna do a normal serving swing. So from this position, we're gonna start with our elbow up. We're gonna to point to our target. We're gonna swing and finish down the side of our body. And I look like at the end of my swing here that I'm bowing towards you. I feel like I'm, I'm visiting the queen and I'm giving her a quick bow before I finish my shot off. Okay, so if I do that on my knees, it looks like this. So from this position, there's my position up here, point to my target, swing and bow at the end. There's my position, swing and bow at the end. Freddie, if you come in, but if you use the smaller racket, please, bud. Okay, if you're not sure if you can swing as well, just one quick thing. We've got an old table tennis bat here. Look, this old rubbish old table tennis bat. You could try to use your table tennis bat if you had less room. It's like Freddie's all right with the little racket. So he's gonna go from this position again. He's not swinging fast. The first point he's got to do is elbow level with your shoulders. shoulders. Elbow to shoulders. Second point, his feet are sideways on. He's hiding his chest. Good. And then the third point you're going to do is show, show the chest before you reach up and swing, which is where you threw the ball from. But this time your racket is going to finish. And the fourth point is bow, bow to the queen, everybody. Okay. So let's have a go at it. So again, we're looking for five swings. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Off you go. Bow to the queen, one, good. Bow to the queen, good, two. Bow to the queen, good, three, four. One more, elbow up, five, excellent. Okay, I'm gonna have a go, so I'll go on my knees. Again, grown-ups, if you wanna do it, again, knees facing this way, hiding my chest, I'm trying to get my position here, you can see. And there's a nice straight line between my arm that's pointed to the target, and my elbow here that's level with my shoulders. And when I swing, I come up, and turn my chest to finish this way. Freddie, can you count me five? Yeah. Ready? Number one. What have I got to do at the end? Two. What have I got to do at the end? Three. Who am I bowing to? To the queen. To the queen. Four. Good. Last one. And five. Ah, good. You can see at the end I've turned my chest and you can see uh, the logo on my sweatshirt there. Whereas before when I started, I was hiding that logo from you guys and you couldn't see it. Right, one more set, Freddie. Up you come. Perfect. Ready again. So rack it up. Elbow level. One. Two. Good. Three. Get that left arm up. Point to the target. Point to the target. Good. One more. Excellent. Well done. And just take a time out. What he did in that exercise, he started to drop his arm down. When we were doing the throwing, the arm came up because he pointed at a target that was above the camera. And it was easy because he was pointing to then use it as an aiming tool. When we started to do the swing, 
Because we weren't aiming anything to hit anything, it's quite easy to remember that arm thumbs down and then we start to look a bit different on the serve. So even though we're not hitting a ball or aiming a ball anyway, we've got to keep this arm up and feel like it's useful to teach us how to set our body position and swing the racket correctly. So learning to point and throw helps us to also remember to keep that left arm up. Okay, are you ready for the next bit? Yeah. Now this is a little bit trickier. So what we're going to do with this one is we're going to try to bring in a little bit of hitting the balls. But before we do that, we've got to try to learn how to throw the ball up to meet the racket. So if you come back to um, your magazine that you had at the beginning or object. So uh, I'm going to try something else as well. I'm going to move the magazine out of the way. And I've just got a, a white table here. So we're going to use this as a my prop. Okay, it's just a stool or something. But again, if you want to put a towel down or something like that, you can. And what we're going to try and do to start with is we're going to learn how to throw the ball up. And we're going to try and see if we can use the, the stool as a target to land the ball on. Um, and again, if you guys have done our classes before, uh, where's the bean bags? You'll notice that sometimes we use these things. So I'm just going to show you. It's a bean bag here, and then there's a tennis ball shaped bean bag. Now, if you want to go online and buy some of those, from, you can get, as I said before in, um, in our lessons, zig.com do loads of um, tennis for home kit, some really good stuff that you can practice with. If I throw a bean bag up and it comes down, it's not going to break anything. If I throw a tennis ball up, it might do, it might ricochet and go in different directions. So this exercise is quite good to do with a bean bag, but you can eventually have a go with a tennis ball. So um, whatever you've got, guys, by the way. So if you've got a tennis ball, practice with that. So this is the exercise. I'm going to stand behind my stool. I'm going to set up the same way. So hide my chest sideways on, bring my arm in front. This is the arm that was pointed before, but this time I've got to throw the object up towards the ceiling and I'm going to see if I can land it back down on my stool. And it's important to remember that the stool is in front of the player. So I'm trying to get the, the object to go up and then I want it to come down and land on the stool in front. If I do that one with my beanbag, if I get it right, you never know. Perfect, right in the middle of the stool. And then you can see that that's a really good example of throwing the, uh, the object in the right place. So I think I might give myself a big gold star for that one, but I'm gonna try and do it again, see if it wasn't a fluke. Ah, oh, just off the edge. So I'm gonna try and ask Freddie this time to come and have a go. So Fred, up you come. Okay, he's got, he's, what colour's green bag? Purple. Purple, now, he's done the classic. Oh, almost did the classic. So if he holds it in his right hand, the hand he was throwing the racket with, then it's not going to work. Because in tennis we've got to throw it with one hand and swing and hit it with the other hand. So you've got to have the beanbag or the object in your non-playing hand, guys. So again, if you're not sure about that, ask your parents what non-playing hand means. It really means the hand you're not holding the racket with when you try and hit the ball. And then that way we can practice making sure that arm goes up as if we were pointing to our target again. So have a little practice. See how you get on. Up towards the ceiling, magic, stop there, and again up towards the ceiling, okay great, and another one, we're going to try and land it on the stool, okay one more time, grab your bean, up, bean bag up, up, and the last one, and stop, oh I just oh. jumped up, okay jumped up to the side, so I can come in, so again if you want to work with a partner, you can play this as a little game, so I think what we'll do is we'll play, um, do you play a game of lives? Yeah. So uh, this is an easy game to play. If you give each other three lives each, if I manage to throw the, the bean bag up and it lands on the stool, I get an extra life. But if I miss and it goes off to the side, I lose a life. And if you play this game with each other, the first person to stay in the game is the winner. So if you lose all your lives and you get to zero, you're out and you've been eliminated. So Freddie, let's try with two lives each, shall we? Okay, okay you go first. So he got it on the stool, very clever. So he now goes to three lives. I've still got two. Ready, Let's see if I can get it in the right place. Ah, now it's just, just pet off. I'm lucky. So I go down to one life. Freddie's got three. Oh, you're good at yes. this. You've practiced before. Very good. My pupil was doing well. So how many lives have you got now? Four. Four. I'm not gonna win this game. Ah, see if I can get a life back. Ah, oh, I didn't even hit the stool. Okay, I'm eliminated. I went down to zero, I lost all my lives. And he's won the game. So you guys can challenge each other at that. If you don't want to use a stool, if I just put that to one side, the obvious thing I can use is my tennis racket. And again, if I land and I go up to the ceiling and I land it and it lands on my strings, again, that's a good hit that's in the right place. Uh, one little thing to, uh, to remember when you're doing this practice 
is depending on how tall your ceiling is, you don't want to be throwing it too high. So I don't want to set it up to the ceiling and smashing the ceiling. I've got to be careful. And also on the ceiling, there's going to be some light fittings and things like that. So make sure you find a, a space which is comfortable. And again, it's safe. It's really important that you ask your grown-ups to help you find a space which you can practice. So Freddie, do you want to use the racket or the stool? Should we use the racket this time? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to give him two bean bags. And again, he's just going to do 30 seconds of practice. He's going to hide his chest and he's going to see how many times he can land the bean bag on the, the tennis strings. I'll count him out and we'll go again. So our usual thing, guys, 30 seconds to get as good a score as you can, the best score you can, and then you can stop and then you can have another go to see if you can beat your score. I'll give you one tip at home. You're going to be more accurate if your arm stays straight. If you bend your arm at the elbow and flip at it like you're a juggler, then you're going to find that the bean bag or the ball goes all over the place. So keep your arm straight and you can have a go at it. And if you haven't got bean bags, don't forget, you can play this game with a sponge ball. You're going to get a point if it lands on the strings or if it touches the object you've put in front of you. So you don't have to have a bean bag that stays. As long as it touches the object, then you can get a point. Okay, you've got 30 seconds. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, I'll put these here. And go. One. Count your points. If it hits the racket, you get a point. One. Next one. Let it drop. Next one, pick it up. And again, behind the racket. Keep that arm straight. Good. Two. It doesn't have to stay on there for as long as it hits. Good. Okay, I'm just going to give him a quick tip. He needs to throw it a little bit higher. Okay, that's better. Keep that arm straight. Let it land. Perfect. Three. Good height. Four, great, and that landed and stayed on the racket. Five, five seconds left. Good try. Last one, and good, he hit the racket, great. So he scored six inside 30 seconds. So the way we play these games at home is you either play with a partner and the partner's got to try and beat that score in 30 seconds, or if you're just practicing on your own and you've tried to do that and your score was six, you can reset and then you can throw the ball up again and see if you can beat six. Okay, if you are going to do it on time, you're going to need to have a stopwatch by the side or a clock so you can see where 30 seconds is. Or again, ask your mum or dad or your brother or sister to see if they can help you and they can time you and see if you can beat your best score. And if you're progressing through lockdown and you're doing these exercises all the time, it's a really good idea to keep your score and that way you can see how your improvement is making the skill better. So if you started off and you managed to do five in 30 seconds, and then let's say in a couple of weeks time you've been practicing and you're now up to seven or eight, that shows me that you're really getting good at being accurate with your throw. Okay, uh, so Freddie, we're gonna move on to our last little bit. So we wanna try and hit a few serves. So we've looked at the idea of us trying to stay sideways on, trying to keep our elbow level with our shoulders, trying to get our body to turn as we hit it. So again, we've got to be a bit careful. So this time we'll use the sponge ball and we're gonna try and start making some contact above our head. So I'm gonna try and pick a safe target. If I want to practice this, I might be able to practice it in the garden, which is safe. I could practice it against a wall. I'm practicing in my lounge where there's a safe part of the wall that I can hit the ball against. But again, please ask your grown-ups or your parents or older brothers and sisters to make sure you're not hitting the ball against something where you could break a window or something like that. So, uh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm on my knees because I'm taller. Freddie's going to do it standing up. I'm going to keep my same position. There's the ball in my hand. I'm going to combine that throw with the turn and the hit. And I'm still going to pick my same target. So, I'm going to hit towards the wall and the ball will come nicely back to me. If I get my racket up here, I feel like I can hit the ball and get it to, stand, uh, to, to fly to where I want it to go. If my racket is over the side like this or twiddles at the top, the ball is going to lose its control and it's not going to go to the target. So sideways on, elbow level with our shoulders, feel like we're brushing our hair, ball nice and straight, and then to the target and come back. Oh, I didn't catch that one. Okay, all right, Fred, you're up. Here we go. So, Freddie, you're going to do it sideways on. So we're going to put you, uh, actually, no, go towards me. You'll be fine, go in that direction. So you can do it standing up. Let's get the smaller racket. Okay, again, elbow level with your shoulders. Remember what you're aiming for. When you serve, don't try and hit it too hard, just try and tap it towards the wall, the wall, and you've got to get the racket up to this position, so we're trying to hit the ball gently towards the target. Okay, are we ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one, elbow up, elbow up. Go back, come back, grab the next one up. 
coming down here and then we're going to, we're going to turn our shoulders and then gently reach up and tap the ball. Okay, one, two, three. Gently reach up and tap. Good, well done. One more time. Up and tap. Good, and catch, well done. And the last one. Good. Oh, okay, the last one was a little bit too hard. So we're in a small space. If we swing too hard, that ball's going to come flying off the wall or it's going to come off uh, of a door or something like that and it might ricochet and break something. So be careful, we're not trying to hit the ball too hard. We're just trying to get our racket up and make contact with the ball. Okay, so uh, we're getting towards the end of our lesson. We've managed to do some throwing exercises. If you remember, we've been practicing doing the right movements to let go of the ball. We had our left arm up to point to our target. The arm was pushing up towards the top of our our body, you can see my hand is high up above my head there. Then we started to practice throwing the ball up in a nice straight position, and at the end we tried to just combine those two things and hit a few balls with our racket. Now we're gonna finish as we always do with a game. So Freddie, if you come over this side for a second. Okay, our game today is gonna to be based on our serve. So Freddie, if you need to stand, let's get our magazine back out again. And you can come and stand in here. Okay, so Freddie's going to be in this position. Okay, and we're going to try and see if we can count how many times he can throw and catch uh, against the wall, but catch to be able to get the ball in. So, sorry, Freddie, if you just stand to the side for a second. So, I'm going to throw against the wall and it comes back. That's one. And again, against the wall. <laughs> oh, no, a disaster. Do you see that? Hang on a second. Let's fix it. Oh no, I think everyone saw that one. I think I've lost control of my throw slightly. Freddie, if you go in there for me. Okay, let's make sure it's nice and straight. Can you pick the sponge ball up for me? Yep. Okay, you can see that this is definitely done live because we're not editing that one. That one was a bad throw, came off the wall, funny angle and took the camera out. So again, nice thing there, I had the sponge ball, wasn't gonna break anything. So again, he's got 30 seconds. He's gonna throw the ball to his target, catch it. He gets one point every time he manages to complete that task. In 30 seconds, he's gonna try and complete five catches. If he does that, he's the winner of the game. And then what you can do is you can progress on, you can challenge each other, or you can try and see if you can increase the number of catches you can do inside your 30 seconds. So are you ready? This is the last part of the lesson. Remember to your target, don't look the camera over like that. Three, two, one, and go. If he catches it afterwards, he gets a point. Call out your points. One. Good. Two. Good. Three. Four. Good. Halfway, halfway. Mind that camera. Quick, put straight the camera. You're there, still it. Five. Good. Six. Seven. Eight. Ten seconds. Nine. Don't throw it too hard, be accurate. Ten. Eleven. Three. Two, 12, one, and 13. stop. 13 scored. 13. Let's put that back up here again. Camera's still a bit wobbly. Sorry, guys. 13 scored for Freddie. So, again, the important part is we finish with a game that works on our skill but makes it a little bit of a competition or something to have fun to challenge ourselves with. So, he managed 13 throw and catches. He only got a point every time he got it into his hands. A bit of bounce, he didn't score it. So, you can challenge yourself to do that. And the great part about that game is not only are we practicing our throwing action, but then we're into that receiving position and we can work on our reaction skills. So being able to catch the ball, just like if we were serving, we've also got to have somebody the other side ready to send the ball back and receive. Okay guys, uh, so that's the end of our Tennis for Home class. This has been Mini Tennis for Home on Thursdays at four o'clock. Uh, so I'm Steve Cockle. Hopefully you've been watching all the lessons. This is lesson number four in the series. Uh, we've got two or three more to go depending on how long we're in lockdown for. This is Freddie. Freddie, take a bow. Hello. Goodbye, I think you say goodbye at the end of the lesson. Freddie says hello at the end, okay? <laughs> but goodbye, everybody. Thanks for watching. Remember, Bye. Thursdays at four o'clock. If you want to share, tune in, whatever you want to do, that'd be fantastic. The more people that watch it, the better. And again, you can see us again Thursday at four o'clock uh, at Wimbledon Park Tennis or at Live Love Sport. Uh, have a great weekend. Stay safe. Bye, everyone.